Welcome back. It's actually been a while since I uploaded to YouTube. It turns out YouTube is pretty hard. For me, if the video gets published on Sunday, that means on Monday, I'm not thinking about YouTube. On Tuesday, I'm beginning to think about YouTube. By Wednesday, I'm thoroughly panicking about what video I'm going to make. Thursday, assemble a crew, shoot a video. Everything tends to go pretty smoothly actually on shoot day. Friday, have we done Friday? Yeah, we're on Friday. Friday, edit, and try and upload at the end of the day on Friday. Saturday, spot a mistake, re-edit, upload. Normally spot another mistake, same again, re-edit, upload. Sometimes spot a third mistake. Leave it in, running out of time. Upload, Sunday, publish. So anyway, I took last week off. I'm six episodes in and I'm already taking weeks off. Oh well, I'm sure it's fine. Also, if you want to see behind, behind the scenes, the best way to do that is to follow me on Instagram. My username is jp.w underscore underscore. I know, catchy. Also, while you're doing me favors, could you press the like button under this video? That's supposed to be very good for audience discovery. Much obliged, thank you. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about gyro stabilization on the Sony FX6. One of my big concerns with moving from the Sony a7S III to the FX6 was its lack of stabilization or lack of IBIS. The Sony a7S III has such fantastic IBIS and active stabilization that for most handheld work, Really, it's just buttery smooth. That kind of spoiled me, but the gyro stabilization on the FX6 is supposed to be very good. And I wanted to find out for myself. Gyro stabilization is when the camera records data about its orientation onto the video track itself. And then when you import that video track into Catalyst Browse, it can detect that gyroscopic data and use it to get really sort of accurate and impressive stabilization results. There are some trade-offs. Number one being having to use Catalyst Browse in the first place because it's a not a very friendly user experience. And it adds another step into the video editing workflow, which is never a good thing, because Lord knows the workflow is long enough as it is. But nevertheless, perhaps the results are gonna be worth it. Let's find out. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. First off, I really need to say thank you to the crew that helped me make this video. It was a very, very, very small project and I used a very, very, very large crew for it. We had a driver, a runner, an A cam operator, me, B cam operator, drone operator, even a person just for moral support. So thank you everyone who came together at short notice to help me with this. I really appreciate it. We shot the first run from my car, which actually is already quite a stable platform. I don't think it gave us shaky enough results to really test the gyro stabilization. So we did another run on foot, which I think really worked. In Catalyst Browse, when you choose a clip to stabilize, it defaults to automatic stabilization, and that can give you a wildly cropped in image. So I go to manual mode and I set it to 90%. This effectively gives it 110% crop. So for the unstabilized footage, I've cropped to 110% or zoomed in by approximately 10%. If you watch the motion of the camera as I'm running, it is broadly still. A lot of that movement is absorbed by my arms, although not so much when I go backwards. One super important thing to remember before you shoot footage that you're intending to gyro stabilize is you have to run a faster shutter angle than you would normally. Obviously, normally you run 180 degrees. For all this, I shot at 90 degrees, which, you know, that's a bit of a trade-off. When shooting at 90 degrees instead of 180 degrees, you lose that naturalistic motion blur that can make footage look so attractive. That said, I think you can add motion blur back in again in post, though I haven't done that here because I haven't found a suitable tool yet. If anybody knows of a good motion blur plugin for SCPX, just let me know and I will buy it and try it.
So yeah, that's it. I'm pretty impressed with it if I'm being honest. It's not a direct replacement for IBIS or Active Steady Shot, but it's not bad. The results are good. If you get the camera set up right, the results are good. If you have an FX6, I recommend you try it. You don't need to make it as complicated as I did. Just go for a run or even go for a quick walk or even a drive. Any of those things should test it a little bit, you know, with certain caveats, it can be pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna boost. Like I said before, got some exciting products in the pipeline. This week should be pretty good. Check it out on Instagram and see you next week. Bye.